Good day, mates. I'm Graham Junkola, and welcome to Season 2 of Vibin' with G. For the first time ever, I've got someone foreign. From down under in Australia, we've got former Wiggle, Philip Wiltshire. How are you, Philip? I'm doing really well, Graham. Thank you for inviting me on your show. Um, it's quite an honor to be the first foreigner. It's, it's kind of funny yeah. to think that we're foreigners because we both, we both speak English, but, you know, yes, mm. of course. Yeah. Thank you. Foreign just means, like, from people from different countries. Yes, yes. Yeah. And you're in Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, lovely. Indeed. So, you know I'm from Canada, or Toronto, of course. Have you been yes. to Canada? No, I haven't. I've only been to the United States, and that was 30 years ago. Um, I first went to America in 1989. I haven't traveled much in recent years because I've been caring for my father, and it's not possible. Um, in fact, I haven't traveled since 2006. Um, but I have seen documentaries on Canada, and it looks like a remarkably beautiful place um, mm -hmm. from what I've seen. Uh, I, I have loved everything I've seen about Canada. So who knows, maybe one day I might be able to make the trip there. I have another friend who lives in Canada, a very dear friend. Um, so yeah, maybe one day. Oh, so I know you're a classic com composer, but have you done any cover versions of com compositions from famous people? Do you mean have I done? Oh, have, have I... you done any cover versions of famous classical songs? That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, I have performed other composers' works when I was performing live, uh, but again, that was 30 years ago. Um, I probably, as a means of, of learning my own craft as a composer, I studied other composers' works. I studied how they did what they did so I could learn to do what I wanted to do. Um, and the top composers that, I, that were like my bread and butter were Chopin to begin with and Bach. Um, and it was actually through the music of Chopin that I, I was drawn to Bach, which is back to front, actually, because Bach is like the big daddy of all composers. I, I, I say to people that if Bach were all we, ha all we had in music, we would have it all, because Bach's music addresses every genre uh, of music, including even hip-hop, believe it or not. Um, Bach is, is remarkable. He's indispensable to any musician, whatever your genre. Of, of music is but yeah i i'm i always i mean tchaikovsky as a child was my first great love in music i and, and he's still in in my heart today um i i adore tchaikovsky's music um particularly his his gift of melody i think if god gave uh, the gift of melody in abundance to any one composer he gave it to tchaikovsky um so yeah i i spend a lot of time even today studying other composers music as a means of, of learning to articulate my own thoughts through sound. And Bach is always there for me. Bach is always, there's always a, a score of Bach on my piano. Yeah. Okay, that's sweet. This is my only wiggle, Wiggles question for you. And uh -huh. that's, if you were still a Wiggle, what would you be doing right now? Ah, okay. That's actually very easy for me to answer because I wouldn't be performing with them. I would be writing behind the scenes for them um, because up until the time I left, there was a verbal agreement in place that saw me stay. Uh, the intention was that I would stay behind the scenes writing for future albums. And since writing music is my great love, uh, that is what I wanted to do more than perform. Uh, I would have loved to have given children a wealth of, of music by way of a lullaby or, or um, anything, you know, intrinsically melodic. Um, so if I was still with the Wiggles, it wouldn't be as a performer, it would be as a writer behind the scenes, composing a probably more educationally orientated music. Um, I love the thought of, of giving a child a lullaby. Do you know what I mean? Oh. Uh, just that that gentle experience of life. And yeah. I, I think nowadays we probably, even grown ups need a lullaby or two. Um, yeah. it's, it's a pretty troubled world out there. Um, but yeah, that, that would be what I would be focusing on, I think. I, I would be writing um, melodies, um, even poetry um, for children, 
um, because I love writing children's poetry and I love words um, because words are intrinsically linked to music. They are much the same. They have a rhythm, they have a texture. Um, so that is that is where I, it wouldn't be as a performer. I'm not terribly comfortable doing that. Uh, but writing, I, I, I would have a world to give to children, I think, through sound. Now, this next question, I hope you don't get too sad, but you can talk about this. A too lot, sad, to say? Too yes. sad? Oh, OK. Yeah, if uh, you want to talk about it, I don't mind. I've been hearing that that your dad hasn't been feeling good. Is he doing fine? Oh, um, well, my father is 99 years of age. He turned 99 on January the 16th of this year, so he's actually in his 100th year. Uh, it's not a sad thing to talk about um, because I've, I've been his full-time carer now for 12 years. I virtually have given up my career to care for him. Um, and I, I think I, I, with the book writing, it's been much more easy to sustain my creativity through words and music in caring for my father. Uh, because caring for him is a 24-hour-a-day job. And I do that seven days a week, non-stop. Um, he's very, very frail. Uh, and he has dementia. Um, so he doesn't, he doesn't always recognize who I am. Um, that doesn't so much sadden me um, because I find that when he thinks I am a male nurse or he might even be in a doctor attending to him, he's a little bit more compliant. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Um, he has a catheter, uh, a permanent catheter, which I have to attend to. Um, but the most prevalent thing with him is the dementia and it's creeping up on him a little bit more every day. Um, so the difficulty I find there uh, is where any carer who is caring for an elderly person runs the risk of losing the, their identity through caring. Uh, I'm losing my identity to someone who is losing theirs. So I'm, I, I, sometimes I feel like I'm losing my identity to my father who is losing his identity. When I say I'm losing my identity, it is that I can't spend so much time creating. And creating for me is what has defined my life. Mm. Um, it has brought the truth of who I am into perspective. Mm. Um, so when I don't have so much time to do that because I'm caring for my dad, I feel like I'm getting invisible. And that's what I mean by, by saying I'm losing my identity to someone who is losing theirs. I actually asked my father the other day if he knew who I was, and he said no. Um, no. So, yes, that, I'm sorry. That just, yeah, that just got to me. Um, that is the difficulty in, in caring for someone who has dementia. Um, that they do get to the stage where they don't recognize you so it becomes a thankless task almost. Um, yeah, I understand. But the, the, the thanks that you get from it, I think, ultimately comes from God through fulfilling mm. what yeah. love intends you to fulfill. Um, sorry, I, I didn't mean to. I didn't think. No, I no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, we get sad. So being, that's not so much being sad. It's just um, the awareness of it. But yes, uh, and I've been his full time carer now for 12 years, and I've virtually given up my life to do that. Um, and there's been a lot that I've learned from that. I've learned to overcome adversity. I've learned just how strong a person I am. And as a result of that, I don't believe that any of us at any time are sent anything we cannot overcome through mm -hmm. faith, through faith and through belief in God belief in your imagination because your imagination is God. Um, so that's that's where my life has been these past years. So when like even when last year when when young Wiggles folk were sending me messages, I was thrown back aback a bit by that because all of a sudden I was receiving gratitude for something that happened well before this, you know, um, well before this change of life for me. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for everything. There's not one thing in my life, even the hardships, that I've never been grateful for. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I have one more question for you. You can answer it short, you can answer it long, however you want. Do you have any plans for a future album or a future book? Huh. No, um, not so much music at the moment. Um, there are 11 CDs of my music alone out there. Um, four of them were self-released uh, back when I started, you know, with the thought of recording my music. Um, four of them and seven are released through my publisher, Weirapang. And all the music on all those CDs are played by other musicians who I believe are far greater than myself when it comes to performing and that they gave their name to my music um, is a blessing in my life. I'm more attuned now to words and structuring words as I write in the same way that I write music because words have a texture, they have a rhythm. And I've just completed my 10th book, which is the third volume of uh, a series titled Heart Matters. And it's basically um, random thoughts, um, spiritual thoughts. Uh, it, it's like a diary, my own diary, and I've just decided to publish it. And, and oh, it's, um, so, yeah, that's the third volume's just been finished of that. So there's 10 books now and 11 CTs out there. Um, and right, I only just finished Heart Matters Volume 3 a week ago, not even that. Um, so right at this particular moment now when you're talking to me, I'm feeling like I don't have much of a need to say anything um, creatively. Um, the cycle will come up again. It will it will occur again when I suddenly get an idea for something else and, and I might pen it. I doubt that it will be music. It will probably be words. Um, I have no feeling for writing music at the moment. Um, but there is okay. so much there's so much music out there that I'm I'm feeling satisfied by my career as a composer. You know. But what about you? What about your music and what you're doing? Well, I'm currently working on a song with uh, a couple of friends and a couple of virtual friends and maybe release it, hopefully, by my birthday, May when 16th. May 16th? Yes. That's Liberace's birthday. Uh, you know, I, I had know. a connection with the Liberace Foundation and, and his family. Um, that was his birthday. Um, and I used to go over to the States and play for the Liberace Foundation in, in honor of him. Um, and the performance was always on May 16th, so I'm going to give you that positive vibe. Um, but yeah, what, what's your genre of music? I know because you've, you've spoken to me about it before at Instagram, but I'm, I'm never quite clear on your genre. Uh, all of the genres, basically. Oh, okay, because I like because you came into my life related to, via the Wiggles, I've always assumed that like, there was a children's music component there for you but i i'm sensing that it's it's something different to that mm -hmm. mm. you enjoy creating yeah I, I yeah yes yeah it's 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 been my savior i mean i think uh if i didn't have my creativity i probably would not be here today um it's been it's been my saving grace and, and my prayer and i i like to think or i would hope that that is the same for anybody um, and one of the great joys of my life now is, is, is hopefully not so much inspiring, but encouraging, um, if there's a difference, um, younger people to achieve their dream as I've achieved mine, because I want for nothing now in life. I'm, I'm completely satisfied. Um, and I would wish that for every young person who has a dream, who, who wishes to create uh, people such as yourself. And I know that you have been wanting to do something with me. It's just articulating what that might be in, in, yeah, in yeah. More, more definite terms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> well, Philip, thank you for being part of my YouTube series and for being my first ever foreign guest. Do you know, uh, can I, uh, I was actually the first foreign person to play for the Liberace Museum in Las Vegas. Huh. That was weird. Um, but I'm just relating that to, to this now. It's like another first, um, which is rather sweet. And I appreciate that you've wanted to talk to me because I really, I, I'm never quite sure why people are so fascinated in, in what I do. Um, but I'm very grateful for you, to you for um, inviting me and I consider you a friend. Oh, that's so nice.